Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, let's go with row what. Come on up, row what. Ask your question. All right. So after listening to that, you got me really freaking out. I'm just, I'm only 15. So like, and, and I'm just still like trying to figure out how I can connect closer with God and stuff like that. I'm personally Baptist. Okay. And, but I'm just like really freaking out. Like I didn't, I'm kind of new to like, like, uh, Christian, like, I guess Christian politics. I don't know what the correct term would be, but I'm searching up some of these terms and you got me freaking out. Like, even though I'm trying to connect closer to God, is my fate already predetermined? Am I already, no matter what, going to hell, no matter what I do? Because it's, I'm just like freaking out. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, well, bro, what, man, I appreciate your question. Yeah, let me change my using. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I like bro. What that's, that's cool. Um, uh, so, so this is, th- these are good questions. Um, you said that, uh, you're, you're kind of new. Oh, Hey Noah. Okay. So I say you, ch- you change your, <laughs> change your name to Noah. Cool. So, so, or, all right. Um, you know what, Noah, your name reminds me of the story in the Bible, the story from history of Noah of and the ark. I'm sure you've probably heard that story before, yes, right? My grandparents love to use it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very cool. Um, Noah, let me ask you a question. When, when Noah went on the ark and you can read his story in Genesis, uh, mm-hmm. six through nine, basically. Um, when Noah went on the ark, maybe it's, maybe it's nine through 11. Um, and he was on that ark as the storm was coming down. Mm-hmm. Do you think that there were ever times when he got scared? Of course. Probably, right? He's human, like you and me. Now, we know the answer to this question that he didn't know at the time. Did he need to be scared? No, because he had God on his side. Correct. And as long as he was within that ark, he didn't have a thing to fear, correct? Exactly. Right. Now, that ark, according to to um to the Bible, uh, that ark was um was like a type of Christ, and I don't mean that that it was like another Christ. It's a it's a term that means symbolism, it, yeah. it's symbolism. Exactly right. It points forward to Jesus. So, um, just like Noah was spared destruction because he was in the ark. The ark kept him safe. In the same way, Jesus Christ keeps his people safe. So Noah, Mm -hmm. one thing we can, whenever the Bible talks about God's sovereignty, it is always to comfort his people, not to cause them to freak out that they might not be chosen. So while theologians, people, you know, Bible scholars and, and different people might have different ways of thinking about these things. When, when Jesus says, um, no one can snatch my people out of my hand, that is a source of great comfort. You think about Psalm 23 when it says, the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd, I shall not want. I lack for nothing because the Lord is my shepherd. Now, a sheep on its own, out in the middle of a, a valley, you know, in that Psalm, Psalm 23, it talks about, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. A sheep walking through a valley as the sun is going down by itself would have a lot to fear, correct? There's wolves, there's predators, there's uh, bandits, there's any number of, of um, threats. But if the shepherd is with him, That sheep has nothing to fear, just like Noah had nothing to fear on the ark. Why? Not because the sheep is powerful, but because he trusts the shepherd. So Noah, the only thing that you need to fear, according to the Bible, is God. You don't need to fear your own weakness. You don't need to fear your sin. You don't need to fear the world. You only need to fear God. And the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Now, what does it mean to fear God? For an unbeliever, the fear is this. I'm a sinner. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. So I just cited to you Romans 3.23 and Romans 6.23. 
The wages of sin is death. For the unbeliever, the unbeliever needs to fear the judgment of God and to turn to Jesus and repent and trust in in Christ Jesus. But Jesus himself says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. There is there is no escape clause. There is no doubt. There is no uncertainty. All who the Father draws will come to Jesus, and Jesus will raise that person up on the last day. Now, that's talking about the resurrection. That's talking about entering into the new heavens and the new earth. It's talking about an eternal life with Jesus. So, the only question that I really want to ask you, Noah, is this. I'm not asking you to have all of your theology or your Christian politics or anything else worked out. All I want to know is this. Who is Jesus to you? It's really hard. Uh, I'm not sure. I I, I don't know that I might be able to answer that question yet. I really haven't, like, found, like, for me, I know him as the person who kept my family together, like, Hmm. Divorce like runs very much, and so my family, my mother's parents are divorced, my father's parents are divorced. But my dad told me that God was the person who kept him from uh, getting a divorce. It was at a point where my parents were like, my mother was just like, "Why are you still here?" and stuff like that. And I just thank him for keeping my family together because. I, a lot of my friends have very rough childhoods. Wow. And I, I, I need to learn to be more grateful and stuff like that because it's getting off topic, but yeah. it's just, he, I know him as just like he, the person who keeps my family and my, my life and like from falling apart. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful for, for what I have, but, Everyone goes through their own problems and stuff like that. It's not just because yeah. I have money to keep uh, well, food, a roof over my head and stuff like that. But it's that. Noah, could I could I interrupt you for a second and ask you a question? Of course. So the Bible says that the Bible says that when God created human beings, He originally made us upright, but we've followed after many schemes. It says that in the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. What that means is this: each and every one of us was created for the purpose of knowing God, for the purpose of glorifying God, serving God. And yet, each and every one of us has gone astray. We've been like sheep, according to Isaiah 53. It says, we've been like sheep who have gone astray. And more than that, we're also, the Bible says that we are like rebels. Um, the, the Bible says that we've disobeyed God. God is the sovereign king. And I'm so glad to hear what God did with your family. That is very, very encouraging to me, man. But if we search our heart of hearts, we understand that our deepest problem, according to the Bible, is not our family, even though our family is very close to us, but our own hearts. Um, according to, uh, I believe, uh, Jeremiah, it says that the heart is desperately wicked and sick. And so our problem, Noah, your problem, my problem, everyone's problem is that we need a new heart. If we do not have a new heart, we will live our entire life with a sinful heart. The Bible calls it a heart of stone. And it's a heart that rebels against God and sins against God. And the end result of a life lived in opposition to God is an eternity of God's wrath. The Bible talks about hell. So I hear in your original question, I hear the fear. I hear the, the questioning about hell. Am I damned? Am I going to go to hell? Noah, the Bible says that hell is very real. That's why I said earlier, we need to fear God. Jesus himself said, fear the one who can kill you and send you into hell. Don't fear man. They, all they can do is kill you. Kill the one who can send you into hell or fear the one who can send you into hell. The Bible is also abundantly clear of who Jesus is and why he came. The Bible says that Jesus came so that we would have life in him. The Bible talks about God as being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So, because our sin deserves God's wrath and deserves death, God had Jesus take that wrath upon himself, die on the cross, a brutal death, Noah, the death that you and I deserve. And 
He died for sinners, just as the scripture said that he would. He was buried, and on the third day, he was raised back to life. Today, Jesus rules from heaven, and yes, he rules over your family. He rules over my family. But the decision that each and every one of us have to make is this. Will we repent of our sins? And to repent means to repudiate them, to re- to um, renounce them, you understand, to turn from them, to turn to Jesus and to receive Jesus, to believe in Jesus, to take him at his word and to to acknowledge that he is Lord and that God raised him from the dead after he died for our sins. Now, that is a transfer of ownership uh, of your entire life from your ownership to Christ's ownership, to Jesus's ownership. All you're doing is you're believing what he said about himself and you're believing what God says about him. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Does that sound like something that you, you've done in your life, Noah? Or does it sound like something you might be ready to do right now? Uh, I've struggled with uh, a lot of things. Like, uh, I, I have ADHD and like, so, um, addiction runs easily and I'm very impulsive. And that's something that else that makes me very scared about messing up in life and turning away from God because I'm afraid I might accidentally fall into sin, not by my own choice, but like by my impulsive ways. And no, I, I, I hear that. I totally totally hear that. And I want you to, under, to know, I understand that, but the one who understands that even more is Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ. He understands that. And the Bible says that he is able to keep you. Every Everyone who is in him, who is being held by him, can not be snatched away. And I hear you saying you're afraid that you might fall into sin involuntarily. But what you're saying is you're afraid you might get snatched out of his hand. No, what I want to challenge you with, what I want to, what I want to, um, maybe leave you with is this. Before you can get snatched away from God, you need to, you need to receive his offer of eternal life. Now, that's not something that I can do for you. It's not something that anyone can do for you. It's something that only Jesus can do for you. And so what I want to encourage you is if, is if you're troubled about a lot of things, if you feel heavy burdened by these fears, the Lord Jesus himself says, come to me, all you who are, um, heavy burdened and weary, and I will give you rest. Jesus says that his burden is easy and light. So Noah, what I want to leave you with is this. Um, I would, I would encourage you right after you get off uh, of, uh, of this, this AMA, I would encourage you to go read the gospel of John. I, I think you should just let Jesus speak for himself. I would encourage you to go read the gospel of John and to pray and to ask God um, what he wants you to do. And if you feel the Holy Spirit calling you, I would say it might be time for you to repent of your sins and give your life to Jesus Christ. Or you might discover that you've already done that, Noah, and you just need reassurance. And you can ask God for that, and he'll give that to you as well. I can't um, diagnose your your spirit, you know, the way God can. I don't know where you're at with God, but I do know that there is peace that passes all understanding in Jesus. And I pray for myself for that all the time. So believe me, I know. But um, can I, maybe I'll just, um, I'll leave you with that. And um, and I can make you a promise as well. No, when I get off this call, when I get off this AMA, I'm going to pray for you as well. All right? All right. Okay. Good talking with you. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much, Noah. Okay. That about wraps it up for this episode. The Think Podcast is a production of the Think Institute and is produced by yours truly, Joel Sedeckes. The Think Institute operates under Church Movements, a ministry of Crew under the division of Crew City. To learn about how to support the Think Institute and my family tax-free, go to thethink.institute slash partner. I hope you heard something helpful today. I know I did. Remember, this is not goodbye. This has just been a short stop on the journey as we learn to lead our families in defending the Christian message. And we'll see you next time. Until then, I hope it made you think. 